Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to look at grain dryers. I have lots of questions, lots of messages on comparing grain dryers. How do you compare grain dryers to get the most efficient dryer? Which brand of grain dryer is the most efficient? Or maybe which style? So is it possible to answer this question without bias? I'm going to say it is definitely possible to answer this question without bias. And I am going to do my best to do that today. Because today I just want to lay out numbers. I want to try to just lay out numbers today. I'm a biased person. We're all biased people. Every salesman is biased. Every manufacturer is biased. I've never worked with anybody who's not biased in some way or another. Some people will say they're not biased, but that just means they lie. So is there an industry standard for calculating grain dryer capacities? The answer is no. Like if you're buying a tractor, there's horsepower rating, there's torque ratings, calculated ratings in the grain dryer industry. There is no industry standard for rating the bushels per hour. To rate the bushels per hour, however the engineer sees fit, he comes up with the bushels per hour. Each company does their math slightly different. They're all somewhat similar, but all different. So you're going to have numbers on literature that vary based on different people's opinion, not facts. And opinion, we all have them. Is it possible to use literature capacities if companies use different calculations to get those numbers? Can we compare accurately if the engineers are not using the same calculations to compare? How is it even possible to compare grain dryers if companies don't compare them the same? Most companies will not tell you this, that there is no industry standard. But every company knows this is true. So we're going to try today to look at this from a numbers standpoint. point. Is it possible for us to use literature capacities if companies use different calculations to get those numbers. How to compare grain dryers. Just because literature says it's efficient doesn't mean it is. There are three things your grain dryer does. Produces heat, airflow, and time. Heat, air, and time. Heat holding capacity. Airflow, heat. These three things are the only thing your grain dryer does. I don't care if it's a tower dryer, a mix flow, a cross flow, a counter flow, a concurrent flow. I don't care. Your dryer has three things, heat, air, and time. Okay. Air, how do we know to compare air, fan horsepower, correlates directly with fan horsepower. There is other ways, if we look, so fan, air equals fan horsepower. We need to look at the, the total horsepower fans that a grain dryer has. So. Fan style can affect the fan horsepower. Now, when fan style affects the fan horsepower, usually this does not affect the fan horsepower more than about 10%. Different fan styles are more efficient than others, and I'm going to get into that in detail. But 10%, yes. 50%, no. If both the dryers you're comparing have the same fan style, 
the one can be slightly more efficient, maybe 5% more efficient if they are both the same style. But if they are, they're not going to be 50% different, maybe 5%, not 50%. Okay, heat equals plenum temperature. So the plenum temperature, when you're comparing grain dryers figure, you're running the same plenum temperature in all the dryers you're comparing. Manufacturers do not. One manufacturer will rate their dryer at 210 degree plenum temp. Another company will rate their dryer at 240 degree plenum temp. There is another company yet that rates their dryers at 250 degree plenum temp. So do you think the 250 degree plenum temp and the 210 degree plenum temp, if you run them both at 180 degrees, what for capacity are you going to end up with in reality? It's not going to be according to the numbers in the literature. And you'll be closer to the company that rates at 210 degree plenum temp than you will be to the one that rates at 250. So BTU ratings, you will see BTU ratings in literature where it says average BTUs or max BTUs. I've been in conversations with people trying to use these numbers to compare grain dryers. These numbers tell you absolutely zero on dryer efficiency. All this tells you is how much fuel the dryer can take per hour. It, it tells you, you, you cannot use that number on figuring dryer efficiency. It's, it's not going to work. It just might mean that the one burner is going to run wide open more to get up the temp than the other burner. The one with higher BTUs is just going to run on low fire more. So the BTU ratings really do not tell you anything in literature. They are just an arbitrary number that tells you what the max fuel usage could be. Okay. Here we have time, heat holding capacity, bushels in process, airspeed. So time comes down to bushels in process. If your grain dryer holds 500 bushel and it takes an hour at 80 CFM to dry your corn from 25% moisture to 15% moisture, you are not going to exceed 500 bushel per hour no matter what the literature says. If the next dryer holds 700 bushels and it takes an hour to remove the moisture, it's going to get 700 bushels per hour. Even if the dryer that holds 500 bushels says that it gets 700 bushel per hour and the one that holds 700 bushels says it gets 500 bushel per hour, the one that holds more grain is going to produce more dry grain per hour. If your fan horsepower is the same and one holds more bushels, the one that holds more bushels is going to produce more grain. Now, if your fan horsepower is smaller, slightly smaller, but your bushels is higher, you end up with a more efficient dryer and you could have just as many bushels per hour but you end up with a more efficient dryer. So when you go over these three numbers, comparing in the literature, don't even look at this number. The only time you look at this number is if you wanna know what size gas line to run to your dryer. Because if you're going to compare apples to apples, you're gonna figure you're gonna run every dryer the same plenum temperature. Air equals fan horsepower. You compare fan horsepower, the heat holding capacity. Those two numbers are what you compare. Those two numbers are what you compare. If the one dryer has less horsepower and less bushels in process, heat holding capacity, there is no way it will get more grain dry than the one that holds more corn and has more horsepower. So when comparing, look at horsepower, look at bushels in process. That is what's important. Airspeed. Some dryers, cross-flow dryers, 
run 80 CFMs per bushel. A mix flow dryers run 40 CFMs per bushel. So your air speed is slower on your mix flow. Due to the lower airflow on the mix flow, you get more efficiency. Fan style comparisons. This looks confusing. So I'm going to try to sort through all this for you and make it simpler for you to understand. This fan right here, if you look at a forced air furnace fan, this is basically what this is. Most of your mix flow dryers, not all of them. There's a few companies now that have developed dryers without this style fan. And we're, we're going to go through this. So this fan, which is this fan here, this is the way it turns. It has forward foil. This is the most efficient fan, most efficient air per horsepower fan on the market. This is next. This is the axial fan. This is next. Next would be a low speed centrifugal. A centrifugal fan that is turning low speed. So basically an oversized fan like this that's turning slower. The most inefficient is a fan this style that's turning high speed. The faster these fans turn, the more you lose efficiency. So there's these here fans are used in tower dryers. They're turned slow in a tower dryer. They use a large fan and turn it slow. And they are basically the same efficiency as an axial fan. There is a company that uses these in tower dryers. The standard centrifugal. They turn them slower. They get efficiency the same as these. So all of these together to look at a dryer all of these together, they are going to vary about 10 to 15% from the most efficient fan like this to the least efficient fan like this. That is on different styles. So there is an efficiency difference. 10% difference from this to this. Now, these are quiet. These are noisy. Why would you use this fan on a dryer over these fans? Why would not every company use these fans? Well, this fan here does not blow much pressure. This fan does not work on a screen type dryer because of the air pressure required to push through the screens and grain. It does not work. This fan only works on a mix flow due to the low pressure requirement to get the air flow through. This one here, the way the air comes off the blade, it getting a good air heat mixture, even hot air coming out of your burner is almost impossible. The air currents inside the grain dryer with this style fan is going to be very hard to accomplish good air currents very hard. Can you dry grain with these? Yes, but they are less efficient. This here, the way the air comes off these blades, it gets a good mixture of heat and airflow. So this fan tends to be the leader in portable dryers for efficiency because it's more efficient than these fans in portable dryers as far as airflow for, per horsepower and the heat air mixture is better. This fan tends to be the leader in mix flow dryers because of the low pressure required and the CFM per horsepower it gets. This low speed centrifugals tend to be the leader where you're doing vacuum cool pressure heat. So Whenever you're doing vacuum cool pressure heat, these here are able to do a large 
pressure. They're able to handle high pressure so they can suck through the grain and blow through the grain with one fan. They ha handle a big resistance. So these fans tend to be the most efficient for when you're doing vacuum cool pressure heat. Now with all of this, we're looking at a variance in these by around 10% from the most efficient to the least efficient. So when you're comparing grain dryers, can one dryer have a fan that's 10% more efficient on horsepower than another? Yes. Can one dryer have a fan that's 50% more efficient on horsepower than another dryer? No. If the numbers say so in the literature, then the literature is wrong. So keep that in mind. When you're comparing fan horsepower, heat holding capacity, those are the two numbers you need to look at. This number here is, is the big arbitrary number when companies are calculating their capacities. But if you run too hot a plenum temp, you have more grain damage. You run a cooler plenum temp, you have less grain damage. The slower you dry your grain, the higher quality the grain. The more bushels in process, the slower the grain is going to dry, the higher quality the grain. The lower the airflow, the higher quality the grain. But that hurts capacity, so you need to figure that all in. Have we learned anything? I don't know. I'm hoping we did. And if there's details that I left out that I should have included, let me know. I'm just trying to educate people on how to figure out which brand of grain dryer is the most efficient. And I'm trying to answer it, this question, without bias. And to answer this question without bias, compare fan horsepower, heat holding capacity. Figure all dryers run the same plenum temp. This is how you'll figure out which dryer is going to do the best capacity. This is not necessarily going to tell you efficiency. This is going to tell you capacity. But capacity in turn turns into efficiency because there's times companies tell you what the dryer is going to do and their efficiency numbers look good because they lied on what their capacity numbers are going to do. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.